I got a little surprise for you. D2R is actually better with a controller versus keyboard and mouse. Oh, uh, <laughs> now, before you subscribe, just to unsubscribe and then mail a turd to my doorstep, hear me out. I'm going to break this into separate sections, everything from movement to potioning up to how to cast spells and unfortunately inventory management. Yep, that one's better on keyboard and mouse for sure. Then I'm going to go over a couple of controller settings to get you guys dialed in for the most smooth experience playing Diablo 2 with a gamepad. By the end of this video, you will be able to make an educated decision as to whether a controller is right for your needs or not. Let's get it. Artie Stallions kicking off this list as to why controller is better than keyboard and mouse when playing Diablo 2 Resurrected. And there will be timestamps down in this video for easy organization, but we're going to jump right off with movement, simply moving around the game world. When moving around with the mouse, you have to click continually or at least hold down the mouse button and then move your mouse around. So if there's projectile attacks coming your direction, maybe some flaming arrows, maybe a lightning bolt towards your schmeckle, you have to literally swipe across your mouse pad, which if you play on a low DPI because you're used to playing something like shooters, that can be quite a trip around your mouse pad. Not to mention, it just feels almost instantaneous and so responsive, but it goes a little bit further than that by the fact that now, instead of a simple walk run toggle, you actually have three or four different speeds that your character can move at. I repeat, three or four speeds. So if I just gently drag the analog stick. Badassius, my barb over here, he's just going for a, a light stroll in the evening breeze, but I hold it down a little bit further. It's a bit of a brisk jog. Maybe he gets the, the scent of mead in the air and he wants a goblet. Now I go a little bit further, he's double timing it and I pulled it down all the way. He's sprinting towards the action. So four speeds, not two. Just use your thumb, sweetheart. So also, if you don't trust yourself to have the control to just barely move your stick to walk, uh, clicking down the left analog stick will also toggle on your run and sprint, as you can see from right down there. So I leave run or sprint on at all times and basically just use a little bit of thumbstick manipulation to control my walk or run, depending on how far I move the left analog stick. And one last thing I want to touch on with movement is that you are still restricted to eight points of direction. So up, down, left, right, and then diagonal axes, which is the original controls for D2, which was only on keyboard and mouse. So if you're trying to dodge incoming arrows flying at your satchel of gold, then it's just easier because you have the same controllability that you did in Diablo 3, which was a controller compatible game where you can literally move in any direction, 360 degrees around, which is very similar to most modern MMOs and RPGs and MMO RPGs. Next up is going to be navigating the menus is actually a whole heck of a lot cleaner. So if you press the pause button over here, it's going to open up your inventory. And as you can see, wow, this looks a lot, a lot more differenter, I guess you could say, than it usually does on the standard PC version. I'll, I'll demonstrate that right now because you can actually swap between keyboard and mouse and controller on the fly just by touching one of the inputs. If I touch my keyboard and mouse right now, it's going to take over KM. If I touch my controller, it's going to switch over to that. So that's really cool. Oh man, this is just, oh. Yeah, that's clunky. Oh boy. So now pressing escape, going into options over here. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you get this menu here. You know, I didn't know any better until I plugged a controller. I was thinking, yeah, this is streamlined. This is very smooth and easy to navigate. Um, Let's go back to the controller real quick. That is that is a lot easier to navigate here. So by using the bumpers, you shift between these tabs here. Since this is the console layout, everything's a little bit more condensed. You have your quest right here. You have your character stats. You have your skill tree, which by the way, we're going to get into how to bind. We are going to get into how to bind some abilities here in a little bit, but patience. Now, now, what I would recommend you guys doing immediately is going into settings. That's all the way over here to the uh, right. Go to options. Using the bumpers will navigate this top bar up here and using the triggers will navigate the sub menus, which would be in here. So we're going to go ahead and go to the gameplay tab and scroll down to where it says controller and controller sensitivity. Go on ahead and just pin that out to 5000. Now, weapon swap separate skill buttons. This is completely personal preference. I currently have it turned off. I'll show you exactly what that does in just a moment. Controller vibration, again, personal preference. I'm leaving it on for the cinematic effect because this isn't some competitive first person shooter where the vibration is going to distract you from a gunfight or anything like that. Swap thumbsticks. What are you, some kind of psychopath? I'm just kidding. If you want to have your movement over here on the right analog stick, you can do that. But again, if I open up my inventory over here, 
this is actually maxed out here and this is still a little bit slow for my liking because when I'm trying to quickly, you know, get through my inventory, this seems a little bit slow and clunky for me. And again, if you just want to slowly move something, you're just barely dragging across the analog stick or if you want to quickly move, bam. Also, your map is just a button press away as well. Very convenient. So the next huge advantage, I mean, take a look, ladies, this is a, a big one. On keyboard and mouse, and this is one of my major complaints, let me switch back over to the, yep, there we go traditional input here. So if I want to use shout or howl or stun, I would like it to where if I'm just squared up shoulder width apart facing an enemy, I can just tap that button just like a lot of other RPGs or MMOs and it activates that ability. However, it, it simply doesn't do that. As you see, all it's doing is rebinding or remapping the functionality of the left or right mouse click and then I still need to click the mouse. So set your hotkey and then press the mouse. I don't like that. I simply do not. I, I really do like the fact that instead of having to two tap abilities, i.e. remap with a key bind and then left or right mouse click, I can literally press the button on the controller and it's gonna work, which is awesome. It's See, I just leaped in that dude's face. So using left and right trigger, I'm able to scroll across these different tabs here. Let's go ahead and set stun to B. So we're gonna press X to bind it. And then we're just gonna press B. That's it. Bash, let's go ahead and set that to right trigger. Easy day. Uh, Howl, we're, we'll go ahead and make that Y. Now I will say this is one of the few aspects that I do think keyboard and mouse is actually better for this game. And that would be inventory management because even at 5,000, which is the maximum uh, controller sensitivity speed. It's still relatively slow for my liking as we're on a mouse and keyboard. You can just quickly bam, 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 move stuff around. Plus you have right click to actually use items as we're here. If I want to, uh, identify an unknown item, I have to hold down a, and then hold down again to identify. So that's kind of slow. I'm holding down to read the book, then holding down to identify the item. Uh, as we're like on a keyboard and mouse, you're just you know, right click, bam, right click, bam. It's just a lot quicker. Is that a deal breaker for me? No, not really. But when you start getting into end game, we're getting absolutely swarmed by hordes and whatnot. Inventory management and being able to quickly, quickly do things in your inventory or your stash is kind of critical. So if you just tap the right analog stick, it's going to swap your weapons. As you can see, I'm putting my broadsword away and then going, uh, melee because I don't have a secondary weapon equipped. But if you hold down right stick, you're going to have all of these social cues and whatnot. You know, good game. If you're playing some PVP or, you know, my sack is full or uh, follow me. I know what I'm doing or whatever. So left bumper over here will highlight and unhighlight items, which is pretty awesome. I generally prefer to have items, uh, loose floor loot, just constantly highlighted. That's just my personal preference. So how do you actually pick up with a controller? Well, as soon as you run over something, an item, it will highlight like this and you are able to press A to pick up. Now, as you can see, I have my abilities at the bottom there, but by tapping left trigger, you're going to see they switch. If you hold it down, you have whole new bindings there. So if I run into a little bit of trouble, I get overwhelmed. I can hold down left trigger and A, pop myself a town portal. And I also do like the sprint bar or stamina indicator more for the console user interface, which is what you're looking at here with the controller. Here, it's a little bit larger of a bar and it's a little bit easier to see out of your peripherals when you're keeping an eye on other things on the screen, like your health orb and whatnot. So moving things to and from your inventory is a little bit slower because right now, if I want to get some potions in my inventory. I have a couple of options. I could left click and drag it over like that, or I could just hold down control and do that, which is freakishly fast. To somewhat compensate for that, there is a sweet little feature for potioning up with a controller. I'll demonstrate that now. So as you see, my D-pad is assigned to my potions right now. So I'll go ahead and pop a a mana. So now that I've consumed those, as you see my health and mana potion that I have down there are now transparent or a little bit opaque, if you will. And that means it is automatically going to pull for my inventory. You heard me correct. Instead of having to open up the inventory, uh, like usually what on keyboard and mouse and then hold down control and left click and stuff it over here into your belt. Um, you don't have to really refill your belt like that. As you see, I don't have any potions equipped here, but it's showing that I do because if I press left, D, uh, left D pad, uh, as you can hear, I'm health potioning up. Now, let's use some mana real quick. So now when I press up, bam, I just refilled my mana. And again, I didn't really have a mana potion equipped. I can if I want to. Bam, now it's set to my, my down D-pad. But once I use that, if I had more mana potions, they would be right here 
defaulted to up. So again, left is your health potions, up is your mana potions, down is uh, stamina potions, I believe, and then right is town portals, and that's just what they are. And also, if you want to use town portals from your book, you can hold down left trigger and press A, and that will pop open a town portal for you. And in my opinion, the other weak point or shortcoming of using a controller versus a keyboard and mouse besides the inventory management or basically navigating any of the menus would be using abilities that aren't projectile based. So obviously, if you're using a melee attack with like a bar or a paladin or something, it's not an issue. If you're using a lot of the sorceress's abilities that are, you know, a lightning bolt, fireball, an actual projectile that leaves her body, not an issue because whatever direction you're facing, it'll automatically cast to that direction. Now, the only issue with that is when you are casting spells with something like a sorceress, where basically it comes from the sky or it comes from the ground or, you know, it doesn't leave the, one of the orifices of the sorceress. It just comes from nature, right? Mother nature. Those work pretty well. Basically, if an enemy's health bar is highlighted, i.e. you're facing in that direction and you see the health bar and the name of that enemy pop up, you're pretty much locked on. So if you press that ability button, it's going to cast that spell. But sometimes it'll lock on to an enemy that's closer or further than the one that you actually want to lock on to. And sometimes it's just a little bit wonky. And I have noticed that there's a lot of times where I was like, hmm, well, this would have been a lot smoother on a keyboard and mouse. Navigating the menus is a fair amount quicker on keyboard and mouse. And then also using non projectile spells. So things that come from the sky and whatnot is a little bit more accurate and precise on keyboard and mouse. Other than that, uh, the movement, the user interface, being able to use potions directly from your inventory, being able to actually keybind or hotkey different abilities and use them with one tap, like the good Lord intended. And then also you're really not any shortage of keybinds or anything like that because you hold down left trigger and you get a whole nother line of abilities. So even if you're a late game sorceress build or something that has an entire tree of each element, um, you can still bind quite a few uh, quite a few abilities and overall just the comfort and lack of fatigue that you get from playing with a controller where you can have it up like this or you can have it down there underneath your desk or you can be propped up over here as opposed to when I'm playing keyboard and mouse which I primarily do when I play first person shooters and stuff like that. You got your hand covering the W sad keys, or in this case, just pretty much your whole keyboard. And then you're constantly moving your mouse around to move your character around. It's just more comfortable and relaxing of an experience to use a controller, in my opinion. So at the end of the day, I think there are fair trade-offs to be made, and it's honestly up to you to plug a controller in. And again, you can change on the fly. So, uh, you know, you plugged in a controller and you're instantly like, oh, I hate this. And then a pack of enemies runs up. You're not going to get your titties slapped off. You can just switch back to your mouse and keyboard on the fly. Or what you could do, use a controller for movement and combat and general gameplay. And then when you need to get into a user interface, like a menu or an inventory, you could switch over to keyboard and mouse. That just seems kind of like a pain in the ass, but it is an option. But putting the dick in verdict, I will be using controller for the foreseeable future playing D2R. And I will report back to you guys in a couple of months. My opinion, has it changed or is the controller the bee's knees and the mule's nips? If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I genuinely appreciate it. And hopefully this video was helpful for you to understand the pros and cons of using a controller. In my opinion, I think the movement is a lot smoother. I think being able to single tap cast abilities instead of having to double press. I mean, this is 2021. Come on. I get, I get that this is a remake of a 21 year old game, but come on now. The overall comfort and ergonomics of using a controller is great, especially for long play sessions. And all in all, everything felt very, very fluid and smooth and natural. And I kind of like the look of the console style interface. It's a lot simpler and easier to navigate. But I will say inventory management or basically anything that's in a menu, such as uh, binding skills or buying new skills, etc., is quicker on a keyboard and mouse. And a lot of times when you're trying to use spells, such as Blizzard that aren't necessarily cast from your character, but just come out of the sky and whatnot. It's a lot more precise and accurate with a keyboard and mouse. Not that it's bad on controller, but it is better on keyboard and mouse. But in my opinion, overall, if I were to have to go point by point, category by category, controller for me personally, I think controller is a better input for this particular game. And at the end of the day, that's just my opinion. I want to hear yours. Drop it in the stable down there. That's the comment section down below. That's where all the stallions and stallionettes get together to feed on some grass and trot around and whatnot. That is a place for upbeat, positive energy. So if you bring any of that negative aura around here, I'm going to take you out back and take you to the glue factory, put you out of your misery. If you guys enjoyed this video, liking it does help it to get seen by more people. So this information will assist them as well. And it helps me grow this channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, esport drills to brush up on your skills and honest gaming peripheral reviews. I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.